<clears throat> okay, so this is provocation number one. And provocation number one is the argument that digital technology has freed us from the notion of the truth, or perhaps of there being such thing as a singular truth. So what on earth is it that I could mean by this? What on earth is it that I could mean by this? It is the notion that if you imagine prior to photography, the way in which people would record events would be in writing, but visually they would do so in painting or sculpture. And painting is not necessarily a photographic or photorealistic representation of the world. Painting is much more about brush strokes and style. And therefore, painting is an active intervention in the world. One actually modifies what one sees rather than objectively recording it. Come photography, on the other hand, in particular the argument surrounding the indexicality of the photographic image, then there is a moment in which photographs are deemed to be objective. They record in a neutral fashion that which stands before the camera at the moment of the images taken. So rather than us being in a world in which the visual is an interpretation of reality, we now have a belief that the photographic apparatus records a neutral, objective and therefore true recording of reality. My argument is that this is as much the invention of the concept of truth than it is the recording of truth itself. This rests upon the notion of indexicality that I mentioned earlier. What is the indexical? The indexical is the link between what was filmed and the apparatus that is filming itself. It is the idea that the human figures or the landscape, the features in the analogue photograph were actually in front of the camera at the moment of the images being taken and that therefore the photograph functions as evidence or proof of the reality of that which we see in the photograph. Now, we can challenge indexicality on a couple of levels. First being, it's a fundamental misunderstanding of photography and what is involved in the process of taking a photograph. For, when one takes a photograph, light does indeed hit through a lens, uh, a film, and therefore that light which is reflected onto the lens and onto the film was on a certain level there at the time of the images taking. Nonetheless, this is very different from making the photograph realistic, for we have to have the conversion of silver halide molecules uh, via light into, uh, for want of a better term, uh, colour elements within a picture, and we have to uh, and we also have a history of film stock, different lenses, uh, different shutter speeds, different exposure times, and all of these things are modifying what it is that we see in the photographic image. So ultimately, to what extent is a photograph realistic, regardless of whether it has indexical value? The point being that I query, my provocation is that there is a whole history of a misunderstanding that somehow all of the history of photography was a belief that photographs were realistic when in fact I think that they were always an intervention, a slight modification of reality in the same way that a painting is. Second level upon which one can challenge this is a result of, uh, or rather, a way in which the indexical is challenged is during the digital age. For the digital image is not an indexical recording of reality, or at least if it is, it is not so in the same way that an analogue photograph or image is. Now, 
Uh, I'm going to get on to the digital, but before we get there, I want quickly to elaborate what I mean by the invention of truth. And really, the development or the evolution of a scientific society that is based upon the notion of truth or objective understanding or an objective understanding of the world. So, if we have a moment in time where suddenly humans believe that their images are objective and therefore scientifically valid recordings of reality, we have a sense in which humans suddenly believe that they can prove the existence of things as in a certain fashion, as existing in a certain fashion. By which I mean to say, we have the rise of science. We have the rise of believing that that which is recorded has been recorded neutrally and objectively, rather than in an interpretive, entangled, uh, enjoined fashion, as if the human were participating in reality whilst taking their photograph, rather than uh, objectively recording reality. This belief that the human was objectively recording reality means that we somehow now have the possibility for science. And we also have the shift towards uh, an overemphasis within a culture, within our particular culture, within Western culture, on the visual as opposed to on uh, any other mode of engagement with the world. The digital. A digital image is made up of ones and zeros. Being made up of ones and zeros, even if one takes a photograph with a digital camera, what we're seeing is in fact a translation of reality rather than uh, a direct recording or inscription of reality. The indexical link is lost. Why? Because even though light hits the lens of the digital camera, what then happens is that that light is transformed into ones and zeros, the ones and zeros that are the binary code of the digital image. Ones and zeros work only in holes. It's an either or system. You have a one or a zero. As a result, a digital image is always going to be a simplification of reality. For in the real world, things are not made up of ones and zeros and either ors. In fact, there's a blurring of boundaries. The difference between green and blue is very hard and difficult to pin down, and there are a million colours in between green and blue that the digital camera cannot necessarily capture because it is just not subtle enough. So we know as a result of the apparatus that we're using that the digital image is not an indexical recording of reality. It is in fact a bit of a translation. It's an interpretation of reality. What this means is that we now are cast into doubt about the truth of what it is that we're seeing. CGI helps us to think about this. For if, using computer-generated imagery, I can insert into a photograph things that look real but which never were in front of the camera at all, then now uh, I'm actually put into a position of doubt regarding the truth of what is in any photograph. Actually, is what I'm seeing simply a rearrangement of pixels in a detailed enough fashion that I actually am seeing a doctored uh, falsification of reality. So here's the provocation. My idea is not simply that we can't trust digital images, but what digital images allow us to do, or what they do do, is free us from the tyranny of the truth, from the idea that there is a single truth. They free us from the idea that humans are, or can be, objectively detached from reality and neutrally observe or capture that reality. And they put us back into an ecological understanding of the world, whereby any time we take an image, or any time we exist as human beings within the world, we are participating in the world. We are modifying the world, actively as well as being passive to it. Now why is this important? Why is this a provocation? Because this means that digital photography, digital cinematography, allow us to understand that we are entangled within the world. In effect, we must come to the realization that we are part of the world's ecology rather than a species of animals that pretends or claims to exist outside of the world, simply using the world for its own ends or objectively looking at the world. By understanding we're part of the world, that we're modifying the world, 
then we have to take on some sense of responsibility regarding our actions within that world because we know that we're only ever interacting with the world but in fact we are with the world, we are n-worlded. So that's provocation number one. Digital cinema frees us from the idea of the truth or a unitary truth as had been developed through the false belief that analogue photography was a means of objectively or scientifically capturing reality.